Greetings, junior scientists, scientists, and citizens of this great, big, weird, wild, and wonderful world in which we live. As always, I'm your humble science communicator, the Great Orbax, coming to you here from the Department of Physics at the University of Guelph. I'd like to welcome you to our February 2022 Stargazing Guide. As we continue along our voyage around the sun, we recognize that cold temperatures abound throughout February. For those who love the cold, this provides crisp air and clear skies for stargazing. And for those who prefer warmer weather, rest assured that daylight hours are getting longer and soon enough, the snow will melt. But let's take a moment to enjoy those longer nights and use this chance to look up. For the last few months, we've talked about Jupiter and Saturn, but in February, we talk about Venus. On February 9th in the southeast sky, Venus will be its brightest just as the sun is rising, so look for it low along the horizon. Alongside Venus, you'll be able to catch your good friend Mars, the planet of robots. And on the morning of February 12th, Mars and Venus will be rising side by side. Look to the southeast, hold your hand at arm's length, and they should be about four fingers apart. Venus will be very bright, and Mars will appear a little bit red, so they should be easy to spot. On the morning of February 27th, Mars and Venus will be in conjunction with the crescent of the waning moon at the hour before sunrise. Conjunction simply means that they will appear as close together in the sky as we will see this year as viewed from the Earth. If you're interested in astrophotography, this could be your opportunity to get a space horrific photo. Yeah, space horrific is a word. Our full moon this month is on February 16th and is known as the snow moon, the storm moon, or translated from the Algonquin, the snow hunger moon. Constellations are regions of stars in the night sky that sort of fit together like a patchwork quilt. They're not just the bright stars that link to form shapes. These recognizable shapes are often called constellations, when in fact they're actually asterisms. And we talked about asterisms last month when we discussed Orion's belt. Orion continues to dominate the southwest sky throughout the winter, but Orion's more than just a three-star belt. See if you can identify these other iconic stars within Orion. Betelgeuse, Bellatrix, Rigel, and Saint. Another constellation that's easy to spot in February by finding its asterism is Cassiopeia. In Greek mythology, Cassiopeia was a queen, mother to Andromeda. In the second century, it was actually one of the first constellations described by the Greek astronomer Ptolemy. Look to the northwest and see if you can spot a formation of five stars that look like a sideways W. That W asterism is the backbone of the constellation Cassiopeia. While we're discussing asterisms, I want to take a minute to show you how to find your way around the sky. Ursa Major is a constellation that's visible year-round in North America. You may have heard it called the Great Bear. There are seven very bright stars within Ursa Major that compose an asterism that most of us have seen or known about since a very young age. It's been called the plow or the wagon. In Inuit astronomy, it's the caribou, and the Ojibwe people call it the fissure, but many know it as the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is easy to spot in the Northeast sky, but here's a trick that I was taught years ago when I was a junior scientist. Not only is the Big Dipper an asterism, but it's also a guy. Let me explain. Of the seven stars that make up the Dipper, three comprise the handle and four comprise the scoop. Of those four, pay close attention to two in particular. Merak and Dubai. If we were to connect those two stars, you'd have a straight line. If you were to follow that straight line to about five times its distance, then you'd discover Polaris, the North Star. Now, Polaris is one star in the asterism of the Little Dipper, which is in the constellation Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper. But Polaris has a unique characteristic. Because it lies along the line defined by the rotational axis of the Earth, it will always appear in the same position in the sky all year round. As a matter of fact, if you were to track the stars over the course of a night, you would see that those stars rotate around the North Star as we rotate around the Earth's axis. Here's another fun fact about Polaris. If you were to stand atop the North Pole, Polaris would appear directly above you. But if you were to stand on the equator, Polaris would just appear low at the horizon line. Its altitude in the night sky corresponds to your latitude on Earth. For thousands of years, travelers have used the North Star to define their journeys and to orient themselves on our spinning sphere. And now you can too! Thanks for listening, and have a science-tastic day! Special thanks to Royal City Science's own planetary geochemist, Dr. Glynis Perret, for her help preparing our stargazing guide. We'd also like to thank the Skyview app. 
and the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada.